Now. and welcome to another session with us at Academy. I'm sure it's very confusing because there's another human in the box with me, which is very strange. Um, hello everyone, I'm Dr. Chloe Farahar. I am a white woman with a shaved head, giant glasses, wearing one of my very chunky jumpers today because it's actually quite cold. Um, and I'm actually joined in the same space uh, with Louis. Uh, who Louis Bishop Ford, if you wouldn't mind describing yourself. Uh, big, bald, beardy bloke in a hoodie, University of Kent hoodie. Yeah, that do. It's quite a good hoodie. It's chunky, thick blue one. And we're also joined by Tanya, if you wouldn't mind doing a physical description. Second night running as well, aren't you lucky? That's amazing. Yeah, so um, white woman in uh, somewhere in her 30s, I'm not going to say where, with shoulder length brown hair and big glasses fantastic um it is very strange actually to have somebody sitting next to me while i'm trying to do this i'm going to kind of pretend you're not there um so today's topic we are talking about adhd um and add um, and what that might mean in reality for people who actually experience that um tanya and i we've we've got an ongoing joke uh that I say I don't have attention differences and Tanya says I do. Um, but I guess we could also talk about that at some point about why I think I don't. And I think it's largely because I compare myself to Louis. Um, so for those of you who don't know Louis or um, only hear me mention Louis, he is my partner. So um, we'll have a discussion I'm about... Have a sit still. That's fine. Um, which would make sense because we're talking about ADHD and what's that actually like. Um, and it will probably go about the houses. Um, I'm very conscious that it will probably go about the houses, particularly with Louis here. Um, and there will be, I can't control <laughs> Louis swearing, for instance. I can, I can try not to. Um, so then maybe. Actually, he's got two thumbs and doesn't give a shit. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, and we can talk about that. We can talk about impulsivity and communication and things. Um, so we'll start with our typical questions, though, which are, um, who are you and when did you discover you were autistic and, in this occasion, ADHD? I'm going to start with Tanya. Um, okay. All so right. When, so, Tanya, did you, yeah, so who are you and when did you discover okay. you? So if you don't know, I think everybody knows who I am by now, don't they? So if you don't know, my name is Tanya Adkit. I'm an autistic children and young persons advocate. So all things autistic or neurodivergent to do with children and young people. And I'm kind of always in there somewhere. Um, I discovered I was autistic when I was aged 30. And uh, not long after that, also um, knew that I had attention differences, although I didn't actually bother in a formal diagnosis until probably a year ago. Um, just because of I didn't feel like I needed to at the time. But obviously, you know, it comes with medications and things. And sometimes you're just like, actually, this is really this could be easier. Why am I not doing this? So we might might get on that topic. Um, I'm going to try and have some form of structure because that helps my autistic brain. But I'm very conscious that it will probably just not go the way of structure at all. Um, so for you. Uh, who are you and when did you discover you were autistic and your attention differences? Who are you? I don't really get that question. Uh, you can just say you're Louis Bishop. I'm, I'm Louis, yeah, I'm me. <laughs> um, the, the, uh, so I was diagnosed 
10 ish, 8 ish years ago, mid 30s, mid to late 30s, I guess. I think you said you were 37. Maybe we could probably, well, I could work it out, look up the emails and the dates and whatnot, but off the top of my head. Also, quite interesting because my memory is incredibly good and his memory is, is not good at all. But I'm sure you, yeah, I think you said you were 37 when you were diagnosed and he's 44 now. So, seven years ago, yeah. Uh, although it was a year from referral to diagnosis, uh, just because the, the wait is very long, I dropped a thing. Uh, <laughs> I'm trying to give him things to like fidget with, but I might have to give him something else. Here we go. Oh, no, I don't like that. Ugh. Squidgy poo, <laughs> squidgy pink poo. <laughs> um, yeah, what was, what was the question? When did you realize you were autistic, basically? Oh yeah. Uh, uh, so it was uh, uh, the the my partner at the time had uh, two sons who were one was di diagnosed ADHD quite young with severe hyperactivity, um, and then I just randomly got an email. I was at work and I got an email saying, "I think you've got ADHD. Here's a whole list of reasons why," um, which was kind of interesting. So uh, we had several conversations about it. I spoke to my GP, showed him the email had a little chat and he said, I actually think you're more likely to be autistic. You, you seem closer to be Asperger's than anything else, but I'm not an expert, so I'm going to refer you. A year later, I got diagnosed. Uh, so it's um, inattentive ADHD is the, the ADHD. I don't really get the hyperactivity. I can't, I, I struggle to sit still, but I'm not like running around like the Energizer Bunny. That might be something also that we can discuss because I know, Tanya, you've talked about you might not be hyperactive in terms of outwardly, but your brain might be hyperactive. And so that again. Louis is so hyperactive. He's so it's, hyperactive. Really? So it goes yeah. back to this whole issue of why, well, it's not an issue per se, but why we're discussing this as a topic mm -hmm. is because even myself, I have an outward, what I would argue anyway, an outward perspective looking at somebody with attention differences and so what I see is what I class as attention differences and I was made aware by somebody um, uh, fantastic who was explaining that actually for them the attention differences aren't the most important or relevant, relevant or, or challenging or things that they struggle with or positives you know it wasn't the attention differences bit so I was really interested in that and so I think that would be quite good to discuss yeah. in some way <laughs> today yeah, definitely I think for me the hardest thing has got to be um executive functioning and definitely memory memory is it's just gone <laughs> um that's all and I definitely have, you know, his memory really is incredibly poor. It's, it's very short. Um, but then we come back to, I learned recently that, Louis, you don't really think in pictures all the time, do you? You, you're, you said if you try, you can. I think. Oh, yeah, but that's not thinking in pictures. That's, you know, you have to consciously make a decision do to do that think thing pictures. and then as soon as I yeah, stop I consciously doing it, I'm not doing it so I just I don't. Whereas Tanya you do think in pictures like yeah. me hyper fan. So I would say that um like my experience of attention differences and memory and so long-term things and things that are in the long-term memory that I can just pull up as a visual image and a feeling image are like there and solid um but things that have just happened or why I walked into a room or where I've put my keys, phone, head. No, not a chance. <laughs> and I think what Ellie said here as well, which is, is quite important, that they're not convinced that ADH has, ADHD has subtypes. And, I, and I'm sure many people will be used to us now. We really don't, we don't think in subtypes, you know, everything's incredibly fluid um, mm. and quite right that it is very much about how visible you are in your behaviours to non-autistic people or people who don't experience. And this is a problem. I say attention differences because I'm trying to depathologize this thing <coughs> called ADHD because it's attention deficit and or with hyperactivity and then disorder. And I have a problem with the majority of those words. Um, 
But I'm very conscious after, um, like say, this lovely person called Nikki explaining to me that actually even then focusing on the attention differences is a problem. Yeah. So in my my attempt to depathologize your experiences, Tanya, and your experiences, Louis, and you know anyone who's got that that pathologizing label of ADHD, I'm still not getting it right. I like I really like the way that my brain works and it's only because like silly neurotypicals tell us that we have to remember things like doing washing and paying bills and all those other little tasks that are really boring that like that's the struggly bit you know like if we, if we can just live in the moment it, that that's like how I try and we'd be fine and this is and this is where it's it is very interesting because I feel because obviously I've had lots of conversations with you, Tanya, behind the scenes yeah. and chat and things like that. And again, because obviously everybody's so different and I don't know what other phrase to use. So I'm going to keep using attention differences until somebody comes up with a really good deep yeah, pathologize. I mean, like, like the like the like the thing over time people change. It's there's no it's not a perfect box that everyone fits in yeah. precisely. It doesn't exist. Yeah. So, yeah, but um, I also don't want to call so you ADHDers more, though. That's yeah, but the I'm more hyperactive at the moment because I'm unfit, and I was just thinking about that while you were talking. It's I think it's a lot worse at the moment because of a the pandemic and being shut in. Yeah. Um, mentally, that's fine. So, I don't care. Yeah. But it's the the lack of activity. Whereas previously, I I sort of I cycled work mostly. Uh, I'd sort of set it up so that even if it was shit weather, I'd be cycling to work. Even if I didn't feel like it, I'd cycle to work. So I'd get the exercise. That yeah. makes a massive difference. And I'm just not getting it at the moment. So I'm working more. I'm the opposite. I'm the opposite. If I'm anxious, I become hyperactive and massively productive. And I, I, but yeah, so that's when you see like physical hyperactivity more. Um, but otherwise, I'm just constantly exhausted because my brain never stops going ever. And it, it almost physically exhausts me. And you never seem to really get tired. Like tiredness just hits him. And yeah, he. This is the thing. He's forty-four years old, and he will literally come and jump on the bed, <laughs> and <laughs> sort of in my face with really big eyes, go, "I'm wide awake," like a child might do, right? And it's because yeah. it, you know, ADHD attention differences. I don't want to call it ADHD. I'm going to keep calling it attention differences until you come up with everybody is, you know, bring me something that means I'm not pathologizing you because I just can't call you ADHD is because it's it's too it's too pathologizing. Can we um, just be like the most fun form of neurodivergence instead? <laughs> You're the most for, fun form of neurodivergence. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, I mean, that's I think that might actually be a good place to try and start, which is yeah. I might start with you because I can see you fidgeting. Okay. Um, which is what does ADHD mean for you? So not not this sort of pathologized dry definition. What does it mean to you for your lived experience? Um, well, for the most part, um, it's if I'm doing something I don't enjoy or just don't want to do, it's really, really difficult to concentrate on it, to focus on it at all um everything is a distraction uh down to reading like i i can i go periods where I, i'd literally be walking around with my face in a book like walking around the town or walking down the street to the shop because i'm enjoying the book and i don't want to put it down i'm just walking around reading. and then the reverse occasionally happens like at the moment where i try and read something and if i'm not enjoying what i'm reading i have to reread the same sentence 10 times before it even goes in um it, it, it's it's just trying to focus on something especially if i don't enjoy it but it's really it's almost impossible um yeah everything yeah. is all shiny all yeah screw. can you describe yeah. what goes on though because this is where i struggle right because i feel that tanya you might be able to articulate what that's like because you think in pictures so you're obviously explaining it's really hard to keep your focus or your concentration and you get distracted like i'm meant to be doing this and if i'm not enjoying it suddenly there's oh there's this i'll be doing that and like oh no i need to do this oh i'm doing that oh that's really interesting oh that's really interesting oh look there's a noise outside oh i've got an itch <laughs> you know just everything consumes 
it's like um trying to describe it as well like if you get a paper cut because it's so painful it pulls your entire focus onto that paper cut and it's a tiny little thing and it's like uh almost anything is a paper cut if i'm if i'm struggling to focus like if i like trying to proofread that thing earlier i got a little bit through it and i found there was something else it's like oh there's a paper cut like a, a mental paper cut it pulls you across not necessarily a negative thing like a paper cut is because that hurts just but just that pull of it captures yeah. your attention pulls it okay i like yeah. this though that's that, that Does open, make sense? yeah but that's really helpful and i think i like those sorts of more tangible descriptions for things i.e it's like paper cuts that are pulling you okay that i can, yeah, I can yeah. work with that. What about so you? i i literally everything that i have to do has to be strength based and i have to get that kind of so i've learned to just give into it now and not try and do anything that doesn't pull my attention or that i get motivated like I'm not motivated to do and even if like I grab some motivation at midnight I will open my laptop and grab it where I can to do the thing because otherwise the thing's just not getting done so I just give into it reading I can't do I cannot do it I so everybody like has to go to school and learn how to scan read that's how I read so I just like literally and then fill in the gaps with different pieces of information because I cannot I can literally the amount of focus that it takes me to sit that still and read something that I'm going to need to take in a lot of information, I just can't do it. It, it, it. it can make you cry. And the more you try and focus on something that you don't want to do, it's like the worse the attention differences get. Mm. So I have like my best ideas when I'm told that I've got to do something else. So that's where like demand avoidance kind of comes in as well. Sorry, Louis is also paying attention to everything that's on the screen. So he's, things to look at. Yeah. So um, <laughs> Nikki Duncan, fantastic saying, um, it's about needing immediate gratification. If the gratification is not immediate, then it can feel excruciating. So this thing of it not pulling you in, um, like in a similar in a similar way, like one chocolate bar is not enough. If you got you get the multi packs, or like a whole packet of biscuits one or two biscuits isn't enough you've got to just keep going and they're gone then you stop when it's gone yeah yeah, yeah. it does <laughs> yeah. and this will then we can jump into talking about impulse impulse yeah. control difficulties because mm -hmm. yeah you really do have impulse control um difficulties um louis just wanted me to flag this one because he was like i used to walk <laughs> into posts reading a book <laughs> and i really liked that um i have walked into doorways door frames we could oh, also then know. describe you know louis has a tooth missing he's he's done that, that wasn't that wasn't walking around reading the book though no that was That's riding right. into a tree yeah and things like this so there's lots Not of purpose. also potentially i don't know are you quite accident prone so i am anyway because i'd like so the way that i would describe my experience of attention differences is i'm only ever 50 percent in the room even even like i'm always so off somewhere else in my brain um like literally my dad he, he always com he always jokes because my name he I was named after um, uh, Titania from Midsummer Night's Dream, Queen of the Fairies. So he always says that that's really relevant, even though she married an ass. But let's not go there. But <laughs> but yeah, but yeah, no, I'm just always off somewhere else. So even if I'm having a really intensive conversation with somebody, they can think that you kind of aloof for somewhere because you just your brain is constantly going and it's. It, I swear to God, I must run about five different, and because I'm autistic as well, I'm always playing through different scenarios in my head in like full picture, but also holding a conversation at the same time. But trying to do just one thing, I can't do it. I cannot, I can't do just one thing. And yeah, and that's why he, I mean, I've always got, I've got a fidget thing, something to play with to regulate in a, in a very different way, I think, to Louis. So Louis fidgeting because you've got that, I yeah, to, I need this, to, yeah this is my form of fidgeting while we've just been sat here sometimes i, I used to do them i used to take minutes in meetings and everywhere literally yeah. everywhere and there's just lists of random things that i've remembered that i've got to do or thing like you know or a really good idea for some training and i've just like done it but i'm still having a conversation with you yeah and and it is it does get very it can be quite difficult because, again, I know we can have this discussion um, at another time as well about why I, I don't think I have attention differences in the way that you and Louis do. Um, 
but also I am I know because Tanya you don't think I'm ready sorted autistic um <laughs> like plain plain autistic but it does get quite difficult because Louis sort of sensory needs and things like that do clash with mine so I'm very tactile yeah. first he's very sense seeking and because yeah. of that inability for him to stand still for more than a few seconds if that um, like he's really jiggling the table right now, which is why the camera is going about. Seven feet. Yeah. Um, so when I need, so I'm not a very good person for somebody to just hug me. Um, and I'm, I'm like Louis hugging me. He's probably the only person really that I'll have hugs from. Um, but when that means I'm in the mood to have a hug, I'll ask for a hug. And then it's like you said, you're being distracted by everything. He'll suddenly be scratching different parts of his body. He'll be like so distracted and it just makes it really sensory, like problematic for me um, because you're all over the place, jiggling. And if I'm, so if I'm. Are, you are very, very hyperactive. But I think, again, it comes like, how do you separate autistic experience from attention difference experience? Not even the professionals can do that. The professionals, you know, if, if we can't do it, you know, it's like, how do you do that? But you, it is different. And again, you know, if we look at autistic experience, and you know, some people are out with, you know, some people are highly masked and some, some people aren't, or internal experience versus external experience. I don't think it's much different with attention differences, really, because I present extremely differently to Louis, but our internal experience is probably not that different. If you know, well, you know me, so I don't know, but yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's where I say why I still find it really important to always find out about people thinking in pictures or not. So I would yeah. say that is probably one of the biggest differences between you and Louis, for instance, mm. because his memory, I think, is that much poorer because he doesn't think in pictures. He doesn't have tangible memories that he's like held on to to be able to have that long term memory for things, um, which I find interesting. And I think what you've just said as well, Tanya, which is. I think we do need to get to the point, like we had the discussion with Nick Walker about neuroqueering, in yeah. that we need to think of neurodivergence much more the way the queer community generally thinks about gender and sexuality. Like there are no set boxes. It all is relatively fluid, et cetera, et cetera. And so we should get to that stage with neurodivergence as well. So instead of thinking of, autistic box here's the attention differences box but, like yeah but we, we do I've never met a person who is just autistic yeah you know and I think that when we because we've had this discussion we work with neurodivergent people like if we need to know like different components of their particular recipe isn't because we're putting them in boxes it's so we can understand their communication and experience a bit better it's not because oh you are this you are this you yeah. are this at all so, so to some extent, I don't necessarily need to know that the person that co is coming to me is autistic with attention differences, for instance. I just ask my few basic questions about whether they think in pictures or not, et cetera, et cetera. And I get that. Sorry, say that again? Well, you can already tell. Yeah, and then I can pick up on the communication. So mm. it's more the communication. It's not necessarily going, that person is X, Y, and Z. It's, I think, yeah. yeah, I think getting to this point of being like, I'm neurodivergent and that means this for me as opposed to. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I do like a lot of assessments on um, children and observation and quite often we get a lot of the reports before, but because I'm reading like the different things, like they might say DCD, um, learning disabled, whatever, it helps me like build a picture of what support that that child's going to need to be able to communicate their wants, wishes and feelings. But it's not because, and again, like, you know, me and Louis have both sat here and we've got the same identification of autism, autistic with attention differences. And we're very different outwardly. So, have you, you know. Have you a screwdriver in your hand? No, it's like the best thing ever, right? Because I'm really funny about pens because I have like proprioceptive differences and then I get like achy arms because I press really hard and it took me about three hours on Amazon nearly throwing my phone out the window trying to find the perfect pen and in the end I just got this fish thing that fits over a biro and it's amazing oh, okay. but you can just like hold it in your hand like that as well it's great I love it cool. for in, stabbing. in case people don't know proprioceptors oh, I can never say that word is the ability to sort of yeah know where your body is in space um 
yeah it's 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 the reason that some of us are quite good at putting a hand in a bag and not be able to see what's in there but you can find your keys for instance because of the way your body connects etc no i can do it when i'm upright as soon as like i go upside down or anything I, out the window don't don't that's vestibular it. isn't it that's your inner ear stuff with someone, uh, I worked with someone who did a lot of like yoga and stuff and they were trying to teach me to do a headstand and I couldn't tell when I was upside down or not and I was saying to them are my legs straight up and it, it, I, I didn't know so that's I, I, could that's been, I could have been like that I could have been like that I couldn't I, I, yeah I couldn't so that's um, under responsive vestibular which is your ability to kind of um, feel and that could actually explain and this is the other thing as well which is really interesting with um, hyperactive ADHD it's like what is hyperactive ADHD and what is sensory seeking to like, because, you know, when I'm a massive fidgeter, proprioceptive, proprioceptive seeker, so I'm constantly, I'm here and you won't see it, but I'm sitting on my hands or I'm pushing myself or into the wall to keep still. Um. So, yeah, but what is hyperactivity and what is sensory seeking? Because if, if Louis got under sensitive vestibular um, input, He's constantly going to be bouncing about because he needs that feedback to feel where his body is in time. Yeah. How how is there anything we can do about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yoga. Get okay. Him to look at the Yoga. Oh. Purely because I don't say that. I don't want to, they definitely don't want to change Louis. I'm just thinking of the situations where he's six foot three and he weighs a little bit more than me. <laughs> so you know, there's there's what a lot of like Austin Powers thing. Then you know the Austin Powers thing where he's yeah no okay break. <laughs> sexy body. No, oh, no, don't do it, Louis. That's why you were scared, now, wasn't it? Um, so <laughs> it makes it difficult because he's constantly <laughs> restless. So you know, mm. we've got a super king bed, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm very sensitive anyway. Oh. But he's just this huge person shaking the whole bed constantly, like jiggling his legs, and then you've got the cat. And, yeah, all of it. Um, okay, right. Yeah. So the cat, cat, cat's around. Yeah, what about him? Oh, no, that he's in the bed as well, being a pain. Yeah, he tends to come and lay against my legs. Um, so, okay, so let's get back to this point that Nikki was making that was really important then. So people on the outside assume it is the attention differences that's the the biggest thing that you might struggle with in your environment, like the, the interaction differences. So Tanya, you're shaking your head. So what for you are, I guess, the more important things relating to uh, attention differences or ADHD? Mm. See, the thing is about ADHD is it's, divide, it's deciding what is ADHD and what is not. So I would say it's things like emotional regulation. That is because I always like I have like a not I don't have a dial. I have a switch in all things. So it's either. But then is that related to alexithymia too and interception difficulties? So it's it's knowing it's very very sensory. I would say, um, obviously um, rejection sensitive dysphoria, but isn't really re dysphoria at all because it's often based on our own experiences. So I hate that crap. Um, and I suppose it's just not being able to be neurotypical because your brain wants to know all the things all the time. And you've got like all the books that you want to read and all the knowledge that you want to absorb, but you can't because you can't. Con and it's just the constant. Mm. I do. I want to come back. We'll come back to the rejection sensitivity. Yeah. And I agree. I wouldn't want to call it dysphoria either. I think a lot of people's rejection sensitivity, even if it ends up being quite extreme, if you like, it's still, I think, at some point has been built up based on actually being rejected. I don't think um, we should ever invalidate any neurodivergent person's like reaction to lived experience, really. No, not yeah, with with yeah, we shouldn't necessarily be using dysphoria, deficit, etc. Yeah. That's really problematic. But what I am interested in is that I think initially, if you meet Louis, it's not within the first couple of minutes really apparent that he's autistic with attention differences. But after about half an hour or an hour, I think it's really apparent. So I do find it really interesting about how, I don't know about you, Tanya, but how you got missed as somebody who was neurodivergent. Do you have any thoughts on that? Because no. 
you don't. Okay. <laughs> Probably age related as well. Age. Yeah, because you've got to look at like the widening of criteria and availability of support and you know all yeah, that other stuff. Naughty kid. Yeah, he was I was just a naughty kid. Mm. Yeah, in quotation. Yeah, I, I went. On to the still, unless you can get him interested in it, if he's interested in the subject, he'll do amazingly well. Otherwise, he won't. Mm. doesn't yeah. suffer fools gladly was a, a common thing i'm thinking about school reports <laughs> you used to get into fights all the time as well and arguments with teachers um yeah, well, sort of a couple of arguments with uh teachers they said something was a thing and i said no it's not uh and then explained why it wasn't uh and we had an argument the two I can think of, uh, uh, we, we came, one of them was like a 15 minute break in the middle of the lesson at college. And we came back uh, after the break and she said, I actually owe you an apology, which I thought really, you know, just as a, as a person was to her credit because she in front of the class said, I owe you an apology, you were correct. Uh, she checked it in the break. Um, and the other one, I think it was like the following week said, um, you were right, I was wrong, but you pulled me aside, didn't say it in front of the class. Oh, what a cop out. That's like a dirty yeah. delete. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. But yeah, but you, so this is like it, again, it's like picking picking between what like what's um you know, what's ADHD, what's what's autistic, what's demand avoidant, what you know, I think it's just all things that I experience that can be under all of those things for different reasons. I mean, there's so much lack. The overlap between demand avoidance and ADHD and then autistic experience and ADHD and and you know everything that you can't like I don't even think that we should even really begin trying to untangle that kind of lovely colourful mess really. Like I think it is just me trying to go back to that whole thing of I find it really difficult to imagine Louis being missed. Mm. That, yeah. that I, I think I, I can understand what I was missed. I was very, very but able who, to mark. Missed by who? You know, probably school, walking around just school. Naughty kid. Uh, uh, moved to primary schools. Um, the, asked to leave secondary school, expelled from secondary school, went to a residential um, school for children with special educational needs. So you were sent to a special educational needs school? Yeah. But they wouldn't. They, that was a behavioural thing. Um, again, they didn't all of the staff right. were like, "Oh, you shouldn't be in this place. You don't belong in this type of school." <laughs> yeah. So just not fitting anywhere. Because yeah. Yeah. I think when it comes to ADHD, and this is something I wanted to discuss uh, with with somebody else as well at another point, which is that I think for some, obviously not all. It really depends on the person. It always will. But autistic experience, to some extent can potentially be more easily masked not for all autistic people obviously some of us it's much much harder i don't know whether you feel have you ever been able to mask being adhd for instance like is it that easy to contain those impulsive thoughts and and things you want to say so tanya's nodding okay so in, you just disassociate way? you disassociate you I, go into your own world i missed the chunk in the middle because i was He'd gone off yeah. in his own little world. I was remembering, I was remembering stuff about school and, and things. So, yeah. Um, yeah. My, my story is similar to Louis. Like, um, I went to seven different schools and then I convinced both of um, my secondary schools because I, my parents were separated and I used to go, hi, Bobby. But I used to go to, because um, I moved around a lot as well. Like, I was a nightmare child, a typical nightmare child. Um, but... Um, yeah, I convinced both of my schools that I'd moved in with the other parents. So I left school at 14 um, because it just wasn't for me. I couldn't cope with it. People were, people were assholes, basically. And um, he was just a social cesspit and it was so boring. But yeah, I, you can you can mask ADHD. And the way that I do it is that I, I'm off into my own little world. I'm gone. So I suppose that's disassociation, really, isn't it? And I think that's what we learn to do from a very young age, because like one of my earliest memories is like, I don't know if you got this, Louis, but can you remember being in primary school thinking like the days felt like a week when you had to sit there on the carpet and listen to that awful, god awful oh, shit stories. And assemblies. Stuff. Assemblies and I, were awful. Yeah, we need to, and I can we need literally to. remember. Good. Yeah, I, assemblies I, were terrible. 
Um, I that and sitting in cry. fucking lines and different people coming out and talking and just <laughs> no, but I remember sitting there like kept looking at the clock and it, it's not moving and just like wanting yeah. to cry because and you just some lessons. There. Yeah, and the only way to kind of get away from that is to just go off into your own little world. Mm. So like the black, the blank stare, like gone. Daydreaming. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Obviously, we don't have to address this question, but I think Anushka's asking in terms of me, my question, which is why did you get missed um, as experience and attention differences? Um, so I think the question is how about the parents? So your mum has an interesting way of describing mm. you. Go on. I, no, go on, because I can't think of the top of my head, the full sentence. But um, Louis different. Louis different. That's how she describes me to people. Mm. Louis different. Mm. Ever since I was little. Uh, the the I mean, usually when kids are quiet, it's a, a cause of concern. Um, it never was with me. It was he's he'll be in a corner with a book as a kid. Um, He'll be somewhere with a book. He'll be in his room with a book. He'll be in a corner with a book. Uh, I wear contact lenses in theory. One of the theories as to why my eyes are so bad is I used to sit on my windowsill at night reading by the street lamp outside the window after I've been made to go to bed. Because if I turn the light on, they'd see it through my bedroom door and come in. Whereas if I was on the windowsill reading by the street light, no one knew. It was great. <laughs> well, that was your form of kind of escapism into your own world then, wasn't it? Because you don't think in pictures. So yeah. I can just play a movie yeah. in my head. Yeah. So, so, that's, so that's interesting. Okay, so that's definitely interesting. What's hyperlexic? Uh, 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 ability to retain everything. Yeah, I, so I was, yeah, so I was yeah, um, yeah. really, so as like a primary age child, they used to say that I was gifted and talented, but must try harder and a smart ass. <laughs> <laughs> if only they applied themselves and then when it went when we got to secondary school it just all went pete tong and i was just not having any of it and then like because i'd internalized oh, right. yeah, it all went pete tong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. literally i'd internalized all this stuff of trying to be perfect and why why is it why is it so easy for everybody else and this is boring me now it's like literally um and then by secondary school it just was like whoa it's actually Far easier to just externalise and all of this and rah, angry world. So Louis very, very much an externalised, and I think that I think a large reason that he doesn't experience rejection sensitivity like at all, or it doesn't seem that he does. So I can't say how you feel on the inside, but he doesn't seem to experience rejection sensitivity, which I find really bizarre for somebody with attention differences because we know it's quite common among people who experience that. Um, and That's I, not hundred percent, is it? No, but I do think that that the protective property, the reason that Louis actually has relatively good psychological well-being, is because he externalizes everything. So if he not my problem. Yeah, if he walks into not something, he yells at the thing. <laughs> well, fucking right, you should get out of the way. <laughs> right, it's never his responsibility or him that the fact that he walked into it or that he wasn't paying attention. It's always externalized. I well, think I mean, you've got to remember as well, and you don't get this because you are one of the little people. Everything is made for midgets, for the the average person. So all office furniture, all furniture, it's made to cover a range of people from, I don't know, it's four foot something up to about five foot ten, five foot eleven is the top end. It's lower group. than that. I'm five foot ten and I can contest to this. Everything is made for midgets. So I have back trouble from office work. Uh, mm -hmm. off multiple. I can't even think what the department's called. The guys who come around and measure things. and uh, they, I needed my desk raised three inches. needed a completely adjustable chair that could go taller. It was just, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I'm, I'm, oh, I'm not sure you're trying to yeah. um, So basically, yes, yeah, so he externalises everything. And I think it's, yeah. it's oh, very yeah. protective <laughs> for him. Um, I also think part of that is your memory is so poor you really do live in the now. That it, it doesn't well, yeah, seem but to that's be a really past. happens. You can't change it. But it's not even that you can't change it. It's almost like you're. It's just not even there. Like he's his memory. It doesn't think about the past because it just doesn't come into his brain. He doesn't worry about the future. So that he's very yet. much living in the now, <laughs> and that's actually also very psychologically protective for him. 
Yeah, so I experience rejection sensitive dysphoria. Um, so only so I don't like cold grudges or anything. I just like whatever. Once it's off the processing shelf, it's gone. I'm like, I don't care. And if you are like, it, it really annoys me that people like steal my spoons by trying to drag me back to something that I, I don't want to deal with because it's like my brain is fighting against doing that because of the attention differences. And also you've got like the monotrop, you know, the monotropic thought as well. It, I'm just not designed to do that crap. Like I've only got so many spoons and I don't want to be giving it to negative stuff. Like that is a constant, but equally if it's from perceived from somebody that I consider like important to my life and that I'm in the sphere of like, you know, there's quite a few of us like in a group chat together. So if it was a person that was in, that is part of my daily routine in life, that would really spike. What's he looking at? Flaying human skin? I don't know. But that would really spike like my rejection sensitive dysphoria. If it's somebody that I don't know, it's very easy for my brain to just poof gone. Um, but if it's somebody that that's there, there definitely that would like woo, massive. So, but again, it's the switch. If it's people that I don't really know that well, I could not give a flying fuck. But if like if it's people that I do like have around, it's like it's massively like no emotional regulation. Um, and I think just because I, I I just didn't get to mention why I popped it on the screen, but um, authentic. Um, okay, so we will play the video. Um, so Authentistic was saying, you know, that they were hidden in uh, a library of books, that they were hyperlexic and it was socially acceptable to be paying attention to a book in the classroom. So they got away with it. So this is going back to my, why was somebody missed who I feel was clearly neurodivergent? Um, and also, can you mask attention differences? So like you said, so yes, to some extent, it depends. So you're saying you kind of did that in your head because you're uh, a hyper fan mm. louis would get sucked into books and so they don't necessarily see that as a problem per se it's not a problem mm. anyway but you know they're not th the fact that they're missed though in terms of on oh. on on just sort of vaguely related in your thinking in pictures on car rides as a kid did you see someone vaulting along like swing from street lamps and jumping over things like imaginary did you imagine someone not see someone alongside the car with you yeah i can still do that now i can but it was usually me for me which apparently oh, is unusual what seeing yourself yeah i'd be like oh i could swing from there and it'd be i'd picture myself no, doing. That's, that's basically what you do so that's what i how i would like mask my attention differences and i still do now i completely zone out um when things are really boring or whatever um like i so i um started uni the other week and i had to go and sit in like um I think we were there like six hours or something. I bailed after four. I was like literally dying inside because um, I had to sit in this room and it was like, don't get me wrong, they were really accommodating. But the thing is with accommodations is if you are neurodivergent, equality doesn't really mean equality. It just means we'll give you a little leg up and you're still not going to get there. Um, but I was like, literally I had this metal stim tool and I was digging it into my hand so hard to just try and stay present and focused in the room because it was so dry. And I was just like, no, nope, I'm done. I'm gone. But yeah, it's it's really, it, yeah, it's really hard. It really triggered as well because like it reminded me of school, which was really hard. Mm. And I, I think, I mean, I certainly, like I say, for me, it was very apparent when I first so, started dating Louis. So we went on one date and he, he all his attention was there because obviously mm. I was new. I was shiny. Right. So cool. all his attention was there. But literally the second date, that was it. He was in his phone. Was it? Yeah. And what it was, was that? <laughs> when we first started dating. Yeah, no, I remember the first one. I've got a yeah. picture of you actually, just on your phone. Um and, and yeah, just getting pulled in so much by his devices and things like that. Um, and it became really obvious quite quickly. And particularly the impulsive thoughts and discussions, like you um, I, I mentioned this to Tanya and Louis in a chat when we were organising coming on tonight. Um, literally, I think it was like the second date and he just, you could almost see him trying to hold in some thoughts. Like he was trying really hard to not put me off. And I was like, you don't need to do that. Like I'm, I'm, if you, I know you're autistic with attention differences, you can, 
you know, get those thoughts out, whatever. And he was like, just thinking how attractive our babies would be and stuff like this. And I was like, <laughs> okay. I don't remember that. But... You know, so those impulsive needs to, to just <laughs> say what's there, what's in his brain. And on that note, um, I would like to play the video um, that yeah. there are content warnings. So please take this into account if you're still here because um, there if you're is. still here. Yeah, because. We've scared them off, Lou. We've scared them off. If people Why are, would people go? If people are staying, you've got us. To I know. Watch. Look at that little face. It looks so yeah, sad. We're so much fun. Well, you should, um, you should come to the academy socials, especially on a Sunday night. If Louis had a few wines, it's it's so funny. Because <laughs> this is the thing, and then this is the thing. We are very different people. We are very different neurodivergent people because you know I try very. I don't. I'm not much of a swearer unless I'm really stressed um, and tired. Um, I Damon's swear like, like I'm bye. Breathing. Oh no. <laughs> Oh, bye, Damon. Damon. Oh, no, don't go because of what we just said, uh, that we're going to show this video. Um, so I can't think what my train of thought was. Um, <laughs> ADHD. Swearing. You don't swear much. Yes, I don't swear much. And, you know, I'm really conscious of, you know, trying to give people content notes or warnings for things and stuff like that. But you really can't do that with Louis. Um, so I'm about to play a video. It's about nine minutes long, but I want us to discuss it a bit afterwards as well, because obviously at the moment we're kind of on, if you like, because Louis is aware that we're doing a live. Um, but this was just a discussion we were having um, and it was really funny. There is a lot of swearing. Um, we do talk oh, about uh, Victoria. You love the socials. You literally sit there almost crying, <laughs> laughing at me, Louis inside. It is hilarious. Um, and, among, among other people, and there is <laughs> Louis does talk about um, basically flaying human skin. He's kind of joking around talking about it. It will make Not sense. Kind if, of, I am. Okay, it will make <laughs> sense if you work, work <laughs> if you watch this video. It sounds oh, much more completely logical, Lou. Completely yeah. logical. It is. Okay. It's always making it sound really bad, and it's not. not I'm just preparing people because of the content, but it, it you know it's um it makes sense when you watch it, so it is not meant to be weird and gory. Okay, that's that's my my content warning. So let's let's play the video. I'll jump. So a conversation with somebody with attention differences when you're at a restaurant. <laughs> so we've only been here a little while. We haven't we've been drinking ages. It's been about like, it feels like two hours. It's probably been 15 minutes. 15 minutes. minutes. He has attention differences, so. It feels like hours. <laughs> um, I've got like ear things in because there's twangly music and like can you hear the kitchen and stuff but Louis then starts looking hold on we'll do it this way Louis then starts looking at the floor and like finds a knife and a tissue mm -hmm. and things and I'm like stop looking at the floor and he's like I was like look there's so many things in here you could be looking at right now and he's just like but I've looked at them all looked at the things and it's like if he's just looking at the things <laughs> there's so many things the look, we just, can we see if I can show people the things I don't know if I can because I don't think I can change the does that top one not flip it no it doesn't flip it I don't think oh. so Look, there's loads of beautiful things that he could. He's already looked at all these things. He loves these lamps, but he doesn't like the ones in the middle because it's not that I don't like them. I kind of do like them and also don't because they look like skin. So, uh, so we've come up with the theory. No, no, not we, not we, just you. We've come up with the theory that the, the owner flayed his enemies back home, uh, obviously in Lebanon because it's part Lebanese restaurant, half Lebanese, half Italian. Uh, but he flayed his enemies, tanned the skin, turned them into lampshades, brought them over here, hung them up on the ceiling in plain view, hide the evidence. So basically that, that train of thought came from, um, I things. like these, but I'm concerned that they're, they're hide, and then he's like, and, and they might even be, yeah, and then he's like, they might even be human hide, I'm like, that would be really you know? expensive. <laughs> to I know. if you bought it. Like his enemies. <laughs> so this is what he's thinking about. He's also thinking like, about the knives yeah, yeah. and the swords. Oh, you can't really see the colours, annoyingly. They're really nice colours. What about that one? No, no. Sort of. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see the colours on that one. So he likes those. Yeah, they're really we, cool. We've had some conversations about the paintings. There's artwork everywhere. So there's artwork above us. Someone called Lamia. 
lots of lovely artwork and um so there's lots of things for for somebody with attention differences to like look at he's interested in the swords and the ceremonial dapper above it yeah he's very interested in those but it's just the fact that we've really not been here that long and he was looking at the floor <laughs> I was looking at the floor and I was like, stop going down to the floor to I've drunk my coffee, but <laughs> So that's what it's like taking somebody out. 44 year old man with attention differences. <laughs> and, and I've had quite a tough day. She's making me sit still. But nobody's making him do anything. Although I have trapped him in the corner. Because <laughs> we're in like a booth. So I've had a tough day. I like the tiles. Do you want to explain why I've had a tough day? Uh, I had a vaccine jab. Oh, food. Food's here. <laughs> Are you full? Stuffed. He's now getting even more fidgety because we finished the mm -hmm. thing, the task, the activity. He's had a look at everything in the room. Multiple times. He looked at all the things. <laughs> many times. The problem as well is where we are, the city we're in, the internet is really, really bad. So like 4G and 5G is really bad in this area. So he can't get the internet so that he can't fidget and like distract himself on his phone, which he does a lot. So he's doing this instead. <laughs> so I was trying to explain, explain that I've had a bad day today, or a bad afternoon. Vaccine, second jab. At which I don't mind vaccines, they don't. Stabby, stabby, stabby. They don't cause like I don't get distressed by vaccines, but I was very, very overwhelmed. So how did yeah, you describe old, the space? It was an old, um, it's the, it's the, the sea scouts, sea cadets, the, the sea cadets. So it's like a hall, um, it's like a hard floor with a, a slightly raised hard stage in one corner, um, along one side, uh, you know, like there's no, Soft furnishings, it's all hard plastic chairs, wooden desks. So the acoustics are really, really yeah, bad. Yeah, very echoey. Uh, and there were a lot of different people, loads of fucking people talking. Language. There were loads of fucking people talking. So uh, there was lots of chairs Perry was in rows. three, four foot away trying to say something to me and I just couldn't hear her over everyone else. So I was wearing, because I knew I was going to be overwhelmed because of been quite burnt out recently so I had my earplugs in, I had a fidget object, had my mask on which was actually making things worse. Okay tooth. Um, Back off. Tooth. No tooth. And I was sitting there and after a few minutes it just got really really overwhelming and because I don't leave the house very often it, I end up being more hyper vigilant of my surroundings and I was sitting there and I was thinking I'm going to shut down it's getting too overwhelming and I felt really tearful and I thought usually I would mask through that and push the tears away but I was thinking no don't do that because you're not comfortable you're in distress so when the, one of the nurses walked past I, I sort of got her attention and I said is there a quiet room she couldn't really hear me and I just like started crying because I was just so overwhelmed and I showed her my badge that says I'm autistic so she took me to a quiet room, um, but just, yeah, it was just, just disappeared. I was like, "Fucking hell!" Just across the room, get up, go. And usually, I can manage. I managed at the last vaccine with because that wasn't a very nice acoustic either. It wasn't well, as bad exactly as this hospital, space. But there were lots of curtains and it soft was, yeah, it wasn't stuff, as bad so, as this yeah. space. There were so many people all, all waiting in rows basically to get their vaccines done. So lots of noise, lots of nurses walking up and down, and people things. On and it was just too overwhelming. And I was just like, yeah. I just felt and, myself shutting down. And now we're sitting underneath human skin <laughs> lampshades. Six of them. That's at least one whole person there. So the at story wasn't one. finished, but Louis's brain has gone off on to. It's been, it's been off on it because we're sitting under them. Look. Look at the things. That's, People that's skin. Him. Yep, that's what he's People gone off to. So the nice nurse um, took us to. Now I'm looking a for quiet, eyeballs. Took me to a quiet. <laughs> <laughs> to a quiet room and then Louis came over and opened the door and she was like what do you want kind of thing and he's like no I'm with her so um, he he came in um, and I was fine then I was I got to calm down and she was asking me about autism and obviously as everybody knows that is my dedicated interest so as soon as I get to talk about that it could distract me from how overwhelmed and stressed I was feeling 
Um, and so she just checked if I was still right to have my injection, which I was. Like I say, the injection itself isn't the problem. I don't have issues with that. It was just so overwhelming in the space. Have you shown them the size 50 leather slippers hanging on the wall? <laughs> That's the end of that story, <laughs> which was I got very, very overwhelmed. Um, and then we'd come into town and to a, a quiet restaurant um, where we're in a space. There's nobody in here, which is quite nice. Um, it's, it's dark, subdued lighting it's dark. through people lampshades. It looks lighter actually in the camera. It's actually nice and dark in here. And yeah. I say, I've been wearing my earplugs. Louis wants you to see the giant shoes. Giant slippers. Slippers, which are these. On the wall. They're at size 50. Which are lovely. So this is a very nice restaurant that we both like. The reason we like this restaurant is Louis likes quite... Um, he doesn't like spicy food at all. I like Italian food. Yeah, with herbs. And this and is an Italian restaurant and also a Lebanese restaurant. Yeah. So one side of the menu is Italian, the other side is Lebanese. Yeah, so I have the lovely Lebanese stuff. I still don't, I don't do spicy food either, but I do like the Lebanese food and Louis will have the Italian because it's something he knows. And then I was winding them up because he likes um, uh, halloumi cheese don't you? Mm. Um, but he does get frustrated when it squeaks in his head. It squeaks, it's fucking noisy inside your head. <laughs> Food should not make noise and green beans. inside your we head. I find that with green beans, long beans yes. as well. Um, and I, I, yeah, so I was sitting squeaking here and I could hear it squeaking in my head, so I'm like going over to him to show him the squeak. <laughs> he was just impressed. Like chewing away in my face, like choo choo choo. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's been our day This out. is all. Our day out today. Well, obviously not. Oh, you're on mute. Who's Louis, on? Yeah. <laughs> Louis is available for birthdays, Bob. It was really much on baby I was just thinking in, in the comments, he was saying it's like it's Damon's 52nd birthday in a few hours. Happy so, 52nd happy birthday. birthday, Damon. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> So not really going so, to do much. So, I mean, that particular video, I've, I just like, obviously... See, I, I mean, she, hang on, I'm just going to point out, she made the flaying thing sound like it was going to be really bad, like it was talking about skinning someone, and it wasn't. It made perfect sense. It did to you, yes. Fucking lampshades were people skin. Thought trees. That That people is literally like. what happens in my head constantly. It's thought trees. It, you yeah, yeah. yeah, your thoughts just go off on really random branches and then you have a squirrel that jumps from one branch to the next and brings another bit in and then you've got a few birds in a nest and it just... Yeah. I think what was... The, the thing is when you watch that and the reason I wanted to, you know, put that video up because I obviously I don't usually do those kinds of videos. Usually if you're going to see me or Academy people, it is in this way. But, you know, I don't leave the house often and I wanted to tell... I wanted to explain what had happened to me the vaccination place but it ended up being a really good demonstration of what it's like to have a conversation with louis when he doesn't have a device to be able to channel some not, of not his not attention something something yeah he needs I mean, that something phones are, are convenient because they're you know they're made to go in your pocket and do everything so everyone's got a phone but like i used to carry a book or a pen and a pad and sketch and doodle and yeah you know but you can also so then we can can we talk then about the communication differences then for somebody with attention differences because i think that video shows quite clearly i'm telling a story in a very linear step-by-step -step fashion knitting and very much getting interrupted yeah. by louis who's just like I yeah, but if, we, if we don't say it there and then it's gone yeah. So we have to. Yeah. We literally have it to. has to come out there and then. And also knitting, yeah, yeah that gives me weapons. Not a good <laughs> idea. <laughs> the video reminds me of how I felt with my neurodivergent friends in high school. Authenticity, can you... Are can you American? You give us a little bit of background. So what about the video? It, 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 were you Louis in that scenario? Were the other friends me trying to tell a story, for instance, and then you're a Louis getting all distracted and going off on his lovely tangents about things. We, I saw the drums, Victoria, but they were behind me, so they did stopped existing once I stopped looking at them. Yeah, that happened. The lampshades were, yeah. Yeah, then he'd come up with this whole story about these lampshades as we were sitting there. It was just, it was also just 
the reason I started recording initially is I just wanted to capture you when I just said to you, what are you doing on the floor? Stop picking things off the floor. And you, the knife. And I was like, look at the things. He was like, I've looked at all the things. <laughs> it was just so funny because he genuinely had, he'd paid attention to everything and had a look. And, and there it was, was so much things, and but I looked done. at it all. Yeah, and it was done. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah, I panic if I don't have phone or device or music. Music helps me distract music. and maintain my attention. So I constantly have um, the noise cancelling AirPods in. If you haven't got any and you can afford them, they're absolutely great. The noise cancelling, godsend. And nobody looks at you strange. But, I like the little soft squiffy ones that go in your ear. Yeah, yeah. So that's what the AirPods do. But they're noise cancelling as well. So it's great. And it means like... So I always thought this as well. Like, do you know auditory processing? Do you think that could possibly be linked to attention differences? Because it, 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 it like I hear it. And the noise is there, but then it's gone because I'm on something else. And it's like, do I need that to repeat or do I just need to wait and see if I can, like, grab it back? Or So I wonder if it's auditory processing is linked to attention differences as well. Wooden needles. Louis got distracted by the comments. Hold on. Let's come off the comments a second because <laughs> he's getting distracted but Wooden needles. Yeah, we'll, come, we'll come back to that. It was. By it was good. Yeah. <laughs> stubby, stubby. <laughs> So, okay, communication. What about we're, it? we're talking about communication. So, okay, what about it? All about the houses and my all over the shop. Communication being. If I'm more. trying to explain something, it's like a, it's like a, um, yeah, a little bit Eddie Izzard, but more. Um, oh God, my brain has forgotten his name. Scottish stand-up comic. Um, he's old now. Um, oh, Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly, not Brian yeah. Connolly. Billy Connolly. Billy Connolly, yeah. His his stories would be, it wouldn't be like a straight line. You'd go, and you'd end up at the same place, but it would take a lot longer to get there. A much more meandery. That's 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 my Thought communication. Trees. Thought trees. Thought, Thought trees. Yeah. I have no idea where I was going with any of this. I've got so distracted. <laughs> how, <laughs> you, how does it affect your communication? Um, how does it affect? I, I jump in constantly all the time. I have to because if I don't, it's gone. And then I think with mm. communication invalidation that comes with um, being autistic as well, it you can't you never really feel like you've gotten what you really want to communicate across. So it, it just comes. It's weird. And I also wanted to. I'm, I'm getting so distracted by you all being distracted. It's really difficult. <laughs> You're the one it's supposed to give us structure. I know, I know. I've got to give the structure. Um, so so this this from authentic, um, saying that they see themselves um in all of us, which is nice. Hmm. Uh, hopefully, hopefully that's nice. Um, and they think that they're friends, um, and this is so difficult to do in third person. I think my friends and I were of the same tribe, and I've been trying to reconnect with them now that we're middle-aged to talk about it. Um, yeah, oh. so that was my question about. What do you see? I guess. Um, just have a oh. quick look at the chat box as well. Uh, a small taste of belonging. Oh, that's nice. I talk too much and interrupt. So, yeah, I cried. Oh, the amount of fucking times it, it's got to the point where if I, uh, I, I, I remember this happening where, like at work, I need to go and tell someone something and they'd be talking to someone and I go and I just stand and wait for them to finish because I've been told so many times don't interrupt don't interrupt don't interrupt and people would be like they'd sort of trail off and be like you're just staring he's like oh yeah I was waiting for you to finish so I didn't interrupt and it's just trying to be polite but apparently if you walk up and just stand there looking at someone waiting for them to finish so you can tell them what you need to tell them that's that's scary <laughs> Do you know what I've just figured out as well? I mask less when I'm, like, when Louis there. Like, my communication differences and my... Have you noticed that I'm more oh, attention that. differences when Louis there? Because it's great, because, like, the, the whole, like, thoughts and random stories, you can just, like, go for your life, and it's quite fun and really funny. Oh, my God, I'm my lights are switched off. What happened? I don't know what I happened. Don't know. I'm going to leave the comments that are good to pin uh, so I can do that because I am getting distracted uh, by the comments. And and I did like somebody just put something about being distracted by the distractions <laughs> or, yeah, is um, 
Where was yeah, that? Chloe, you're supposed to be in charge. You were herding cats. <laughs> it's really, really difficult with with Louis Ooh. here as well. It is quite difficult. I have, I have, I do remember being told by generally the teachers I got on well with that I quite often derailed things, but it was almost always in a fun or interesting <laughs> way, as opposed to just being a pain in the arse. And, and ah, really that was so bright. That was a bit blinding. Yeah. Sorry. And, and I think. So because obviously we are talking about adults that you, you know, would have been neurodivergent young people who've grown into adults <laughs> and the, that impulsivity, when did that yeah. happen? <laughs> but that impulsivity of saying random things like Louis did in the video that I showed, um, you know, not you're not necessarily going to grow out in quotation marks of those things. So I think talking about um this and then hopefully people with their young people as well can relate and go oh look you know adults who are still doing that <laughs> yeah. um, and then i've just wanted to talk about gaming and things as well so louis louis is like what gaming see there you go caught his attention right so louis 44 and he's a very big gamer um why, why is always 44 on a relevant? device because someone right. ask no, nope, because you're an adult, and I just want to make the point that you're an adult, mm. and yeah, that gaming is incredibly important to you. And so earlier mm. on today, I went up, and you were gaming, mm. and you were also playing a film mm. on another monitor. Mm. He was doing both, but trying to get attention for something else. So I was trying to ask him for something that that wasn't going to happen. But, but he was gaming. I mean, like, he wasn't. Is. So, like, I have children, so I have, like, routines and stuff to follow and things that I have to do. So, for example, when the children get in from school, you know, we're making sure everybody's happy, we're making sure the uniforms are... Because I have to do it straight away. If, if, if I don't see something straight away, it's completely gone, or it becomes a demand and it's never going to get done and I'm just going to sit and cry. Um, so, like, I will literally put, like, Netflix on the iPad I'll have one ear pod in with like music going as well so that I can get through the task of like getting all the lunches ready for the next day and the uniforms and that that like overwhelming of attention it almost like distracts my brain from the demand of having to focus on something that I'm really not interested in doing does that even make sense I've I've had periods gaming now ipad plus watching you and commenting yeah um yeah i've had i quite distinctly remember like playing a game on my pc i'd have uh the tv on playing a film um i'd be i'd have a book for like boring bits in the film and loading screens in the game uh i'd be texting someone as well on my phone and and music as well it just yeah the, but that's the... calming because otherwise you can't do the one thing that you want to do. I have to have all those, like the doodling and stuff like that and the phone. I have to have those in meetings because otherwise I would not be able to take in a thing that was said to me at all. So I'm like sitting on my hands to get appropriate set feedback. I'm like keep flicking onto my phone. I'm like doing all these lists. I've like gone through like two, uh, two sheets of A4 on both sides already. Yeah, and you can't see Louis. He's playing an imaginary keyboard right now. He's playing a keyboard. <laughs> yeah, but if, I can't. The, the I music can't is in my head. Sorry, Sega. Do you know if I need to do cleaning or something, which is like the nemesis worst thing? Like if I wanted to be a cleaner, I'd have a frigging cleaning company. Do you know what I yeah. get? Yeah, I literally get like one of my friends to ring me or I ring my dad for a catch up or whatever. Because if I'm chatting to him about and he's just realized his own neurodivergence as well. So that's great because it means that I can do something that's like my specific interest for like maybe an hour on the phone because he's asking me all these questions, which is brilliant. And the next thing you know, I've like cleaned the whole house and it's great. It's like a drug. But yeah, I can't just go oh, I really need to clean up. Oh, what do I, it, you, it, like, it, you just freeze. You can't do that. Like, There's too many things, things to, too many things to do. So I can do one, like, washing up. Okay, I can do that. That's one thing. But music. But you don't finish, you never finish the washing You have to soak up. things. So I, I, I know you say you have to soak things. What I think, this isn't like a domestic argument. I, <laughs> I do wonder that, 
it's almost again potentially almost like a form of masking that he doesn't want to do the thing his brain doesn't want to let him he's not interested etc cetera, etc cetera, to do the thing i.e washing up and so instead of just saying to me i don't want to <laughs> he says but everything needs to soak nothing needs to soak no but you've got to remember especially when demand avoidance comes in like your brain is literally designed to screw you over it's almost like haha touche well played brain like i can so i use adhd medication more of a tool than a daily thing um because and it, it so it, it helps a little bit but you still can't concentrate on stuff you don't want to concentrate on so like we've got a really good mutual friend here in and I'm doing my little bloggy posts and I know that I'm going to have to do masking at some point. I know that I'm going to have to do masking. So I was like, right, I'm definitely going to do this because I'm like, there's going to be judgment. He's going to be watching. So I'm like, right, take the medication. <laughs> What's that? I have to pause the live stream. Or I do it. Yeah, <laughs> I do that so too. <laughs> so I'm taking the medication in the morning. I'm sat in front of my laptop, right? And I'm not joking. I've done like literally every job on the job list that I had to do, then went to type about masking and ended up talking about PDA strategies and something else. And then by the time the meds wore off in the afternoon, I crashed like, oh, my God, I've done loads. I've cleaned this. I've done that. Blah, blah, blah. Everything but the thing that I was supposed to do. And I was just like, I didn't even notice that. Like, well played, brain. And this is where we've got spend two hours doing something to to avoid doing a 20 minute job. Fucking yeah. Job. But the thing minutes. is, right, <laughs> with type. ADHD medication, <laughs> you spend those two hours more productively doing things that you should do to avoid doing the 20 minute job. <laughs> yeah, you still can't choose what you cannot. It's, literally, <laughs> it's, it's an absolute impossibility to concentrate. Like, don't even try. Well, that's torture. Louis also fighting with the cat right I'm not now. fighting with the cat. They're he's annoyed fighting. at me because normally I would be making dinner now and I'm not. And he's annoyed at me that I'm not. He's told me more than once. Ow. So they're play fighting <laughs> off screen. Ow. Ow. So, yeah. So gaming. Gaming <laughs> is, is you know, when when particularly when parents are worried about their young person yes, who's God. gaming. You know, there's so many different reasons that, a person is if they're neurodivergent might be gaming it might be disassociation from uh, and getting sucked into something that's not the stressful world that we're in um but it might also be taking and giving spoons energy which louis that's what louis yes tanya it's meditation it's like meditation honestly it is because it's something that you can get so engrossed in like we were talking about the sex education thing and like I binged it. And as soon as it came out, I literally had it on everywhere in my headphones, on the little iPad -y thing that I was carrying around doing. And I literally binged it in a day, the whole thing. Like three that seasons. No, no, the latest one. Oh, season three. Yeah, I yeah. did um, I did Breaking Bad. I didn't watch Breaking Bad until uh, it was at least a year after it had finished. Mm. Um, and I'd, I'd kind of avoided it because that waiting a week for an episode drives me fucking insane. Um, but also, I can't, no, 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 I can't cope with that. I can't like literally. iPads about to go through the window if you make me wait wait a week for an episode. Yeah. <laughs> the problem we're having is that the gap between seasons for things. Oh, it's now. so long. It's so a I've, year between I've seasons. Been, well, I've been waiting me. for certain things, and now we can't watch it together because he's like, no, it's been too long now. Yeah, I've I've forgotten. Been, I've forgotten. I've forgotten, and I don't care anymore. I don't yeah. care about any of the characters or any of but it anymore. How um, amazing is it when you find like something that looks like a really good season and then you look at like a really good series and you look and there's about six seasons. It's literally like a gift from the gods. It's Hallelujah. Fun. Like Game of Thrones, don't go past season six and it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Season seven at a push. Oh look, and then and then Bobby, Game of Thrones whole thing in like three and a half to four days yeah i did i did breaking bad in five days uh in i worked in the university and it shut for christmas to new year um and this one particular year i had nothing to do most people i knew were away so i thought oh i'll give breaking bad a go five days later it was literally it was like a full-time job 40 something hours uh i i i'd pause it or between episodes to go and grab a snack and a, a, another coffee and go to the loo and then sit back down and watch Game of Thrones, uh, Breaking Bad Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. But that's the thing about attention differences. It's literally only that kind of monotropic focus that gives us a break from the frigging attention difference, the constant mental gymnastics. 
you know, that it just it's it's relief to do all the things. I just and I saw what Victoria's now said about um, binge watching, but I did want to flag what Victoria said here, which I thought was really interesting. I don't because I've never taken ADHD meds. So can you both and, and we're not here. We're not talking about people. You We're not saying you should or shouldn't take meds or anything like that. We're not talking about that. We're talking about two people's lived experiences or three, if we include Victoria. So Victoria's saying didn't realise how fast my thoughts go mm -hmm. until she started ADHD meds and it was a revelation. So. Can you, because you mentioned, Tanya, you said that when you've used meds, it's like a tool. It's not something you use daily. And Louis, you don't take yours, the majority. I don't even remember the last time you've had ADHD meds. A little while ago. I did it here. I brought them in to, to, to turn down the ticket. So can you describe? Who's your first? Can you just, do you want to describe? Okay. Um, it's, 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 for, so there's two, basically there's two types of ADHD meds that I'm aware of. One works similar to kind of antidepressants where you take it consistently all the time every day and it sort of builds up in your system plateaus stays in your system and if you stop taking it it takes a little while to come back out and then the other type that works like paracetamol or aspirin where you take them as and when lasts in your system four to six hours and then it's done uh those are the ones i've got <coughs> um because i don't want to be on them every day all the time uh I take them as and when tend to last about four minutes four minutes <laughs> four hours on me because i'm big doesn't last six hours sorry jasper's shouting at me that i should that i'm not making dinner so <laughs> we're having takeaway shush <laughs> um and uh those are the ones i've got and it's like a, it, they 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 have an impact uh it's not like one thing that's drastic it's like a, an accumulation of of little changes so it's a little bit easier for me to focus on something to concentrate on something even if i don't enjoy it it's a little bit harder for me to be distracted it's a little bit easier and quicker for me to recognize if i am distracted it's a little bit easier to pull myself back to what i'm supposed to do or need to be doing um it's just it's like an accum a cumulative thing that that adds up to a i guess overall a fairly big difference but it's it's like little bits and like most of the time I've got like six concurrent thoughts and trying to stay focused on one is really difficult because they're all the same volume. volume. It just turns uh, and, the volume down on the others, doesn't it? Yeah. So whichever one I'm focusing on, it means the others, it doesn't mute them, just turns them down a little bit yeah. on multiple levels. Yeah. Yeah. So it means that you can ignore the other noise some more. And it's it a, means it's a bit you easier, yeah. And you don't need the other external ex, um, distractors to turn the internal noise down as much. But you still can't pick. ADHD. Yeah, I still, I can't pick what I um, um, focus on at all, even on ADHD meds. I can't pick. Like, it has to, you still have to have a hook and want to do something. That's, I've seen people say that. They have to be careful if they take ADHD meds because whatever they're doing when they kick in, that's what they're going to be doing for the next several hours, whatever it is. Still, I can still flip, but I can do that without ADHD meds anyway if I get a good order. <laughs> like, if something really hooks me in, I'm done. Like, Oh, like, yeah, hyper-focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, how many mm. conversations have we had? I was like, oh, my Lord, I'll be on in a minute. I've just realised I haven't peed all day. Or, oh, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. you, you know, but... um. Yeah, it doesn't make yeah, it doesn't make you it does it make you hyper? I mean, I don't know because actually that clarity means that I'm able to be as I think what stops me being hyperactive is the fact that I'm constantly jumping from one thing to the next. So what really happens is not much. So when you've got the medication and it turns the volume down on the other things and you can actually stop jumping from one thing to the next. It makes you look hyperactive when actually you're more focused. Does that make sense? And I think that was something that is, we mentioned early on, which is that I found interesting of what you said, is that you might not appear hyperactive on the outside, but your brain is certainly hyperactive on the inside. And again, this is because the problem with diagnosis multiple problems but one of the problems with diagnosis is as an outsider looking at people and and that's not the same as understanding what it's like on the inside no. um louis do you want to just quickly are you stimulant um, or non-stimulant what the the meds the stimulant aren't they is methylphenidate hydrochloride same mine. yeah um, and they tend to be more effective but it, it's literally it's like um i suppose that neurotypical like neurotypical people when they're tired they use caffeine and they have like 
at loads of espressos and then they can go, 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 go and crash. I should imagine that tool is similar to what ADHD meds do for us in the same kind of way or something. You know, well, there, there, there was a comment about meds make a speedy and loss of appetite, which would actually suggest, from my understanding of it, that you're that not ADHD high. because that's one of the ways they say you they know, know it's, it's an accurate diagnosis because the, the stimulant meds don't have the same effect on people with ADHD that it does on neurotypicals. It doesn't make us hyper and yeah, or I would say the dose is too high, but it does oh, it, it does it does put me off food. But if I'm busy, I, that's not because of the stimulant medication. That's because if I'm focused on something, I can't. I forget to eat. It's because you don't care about food enough. Bloody amateurs! Nothing puts well, me off food. No, 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 no. <laughs> favorite, favorite, favorite things in the world, but it has to be an event. And no, it has it's, fuel. it's tasty, delicious fuel, but it's not an event. He just always goes on a bit about being fuel. Um, so then, and then we've got James me. here as well saying caffeine relaxes me, and, and Louis much. drinks a lot of caffeine, and I'm very caffeine sensitive, so I can't. It's I been can't. hours since I've had a coffee, and I'm less calm than I have been all day. Yeah, so I'm like, I'm like that as well. So literally, um, coffee coffee makes me shake. It doesn't make me hyper, it just makes not me not shake. Me. And feel a bit like sweaty. So obviously that's us talking. I want to come back to talking Pops. about because somebody's made a comment that I'd like to address. And I know you've got a, a, a blog out on neurodivergence and addiction with um, our mm -hmm. fantastic David Gray Hammond. So I want to come back to that. So I'm just flagging that so I don't forget it. Um, but what I want to talk about as well, so we've just talked, you just mentioned about meds and how you've experienced them. But I also yeah. want to talk about what you've obviously recognised for yourself, for instance, which is, and this isn't going to work for everybody. So this is just Louis' lived experience. But for you, exercise, for instance, cycling lots. Oh, God, makes a hell of a difference. The, I, I'm yeah. not, I'm getting, I'm really unfit at the moment. I'm piling on the pounds. <laughs> just not active and it's it's yeah my adhd is so much worse attention focus um irritability uh tolerance of annoying people <laughs> i was told very early on not, that i annoy annoying. him the least of anyone ever and that that was a comp oh my god that's that what i say to the guy that i'm dating i'm like i can actually tolerate you for like quite a length of time and speak to you mm. every day and it doesn't irritate me occasionally that's... occasionally not that no but not that much so like they're no. the most tolerable people yeah I find people right quite difficult to tolerate on like a lot when mm. they're a lot a lot in your space and, a lot. And thinking about like I say, so initially when I first started dating Louis, like I said, there was the things of um him being very impulsive in the things he was saying, talking about us, you know, what it'd be like if we got married and had kids and stuff after like two dates. Um which would usually maybe make somebody very uncomfortable and nervous, but I knew it was just what was in his head kind of thing. I want to so start waving a red flag right now. <laughs> no, oh. I'm um, oh, no, Tanya, no, help. So babies, you're going to make beautiful babies. That's no. what you're going to do. No. And we're going to call them no, okay. my children. And the other, things, the other things that were, I guess, um, a bit of a shock to me or a bit different and things like this was the, his, his memory. The fact that your memory was so incredibly poor. Who are you again? Exactly. Um, that, you know, usually when you start dating oh. somebody, yeah, do you want to go deal with it? Yeah. He's going to go deal with a cat. Um, cat so usually when you first start dating somebody, typically speaking anyway, you know, they're interested, they'll message, they'll this, that and the other. Um, but with Louis, it was almost like, as soon as I left the room, I no longer existed. And it just, I wasn't in his mind kind of thing. So he wouldn't do that thing of messaging and, and things. And so that was quite difficult because I was kind of like, do you like me? Do you not like me? And he was like, no, I just, I've been doing things. And but I, then, I just forgot. Yeah, yeah. But then when he's front of you, you get all of the emotions and all of the things because it looks like there's a switch, not dial. And that's what yeah. it is. So that's why, like... You know, when people say, like, we've, we've got our chats and group chats and stuff. <laughs> Jasper made a stink log. So, um, but I have to keep the notifications on because otherwise I forget about all my friends. Oh, okay. Right. Yeah. Sometimes I switch them on, but off. But then I have to, if I'd like, so I'm away, like, Monday, Tuesday, assessing. So, like, I've got to be completely. But, yeah. It, it, yeah. 
because it's just the things like we are point and shoot people and that's why i do point and shoot work as well so like meetings advocacy and the thing that so the positives of adhd we are never ever boring ever 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 we're never boring and simon's just going to come up and call me a boring bastard now you watch <laughs> but um so we're never boring we think really quickly on our feet i think as well so like in advocacy or situations and things like that i think that most of us are probably quite good in a crisis as well i am anyway i don't know about louis but if there was to be a crisis i'm just quite bish bash bosh i can think very quickly through things um the information like when we retain information it's but like i'm talking about all the really good things about being adhd but like where's the diff where's the difference between the autistic experience and the adhd experience you know i guess it is the difficulty that he will have with like structure and things like i really do need structure it's really important to me like surprises are such a problem for me um i need a plan you know i need to know a lot of the time about what's going on and he's incredibly impulsive um so as an example um it was nice he he impulsively when we first started dating like the first year booked a holiday for us to the bookshop oh, yeah. in scotland. scotland but because of them being really booked up it wasn't for like two years right so he impulsively booked it that's fine that's that's lovely then when it gets around to it he'd almost forgotten the thing obviously I had forgotten yeah we'd forgotten I, the thing I, I would have that would have been gone yeah and it was it fell to me to be the one that had to do the plans because he was like well, why do we have to plan all that stuff we'll just go i was like you can't just go to scotland like how are we going to get can. there no but it was the how are we going to get there what what you know what we're taking etc cetera, etc cetera. he had none of that ability mm. um and he genuinely yeah. just thought we were gonna just yeah so I, i'm not i don't I know that i have to do planning and stuff but i generally avoid it and I just do like strengths based stuff so like i was having this conversation with mary cartledge actually because we work together quite um a lot um she's an independent social worker and we're way together um but she's like exploring her own neurodivergence and attention differences and things that annoy her and stuff like that and we've we're like we've got all these assessment we've got all these assessments to do and we've got this to do and we've got that and we're just like we're both sat looking at our diaries and we can't make it work and then what like packing how do you pack louis i cannot pack i can't do just it pack pack things in. So for do you know what, what pack for what though anything right so what i what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna get out i'm going for like one night and two days i'm gonna get out the biggest suitcase ever and i'm just gonna throw all the work clothes in there and hope that i've just captured everything that i might oh, I, I kind of like okay what do i wear this 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 and i probably have to go back over it and go oh that's not enough i'm going for how long okay no i need more see and i, I end up taking too much out. Like, but what if I need this? What if I need that? What if I haven't been yeah. <laughs> not having the thing that you want? Yeah, I for years, I, uh, backpacks full of stuff that I might need, like just mm -hmm. in everyday life, uh, not might need in everyday life, a backpack in everyday life with like multi tool, book of the moment, pen, probably four pens because I might have forgotten there's one, there's a spare, and then you know, uh, pad or three um earphones chargers uh i'd have to go and have a look at my notes. but the big Listen. difference there is that again for that holiday for instance i would have written a list i would have visualized the kinds of things i thought we would be doing what kinds of things i would want to wear exactly and that's why it's not actually that enjoyable for me because i have to do all that whereas and then louis will say well don't don't do it like it which is frustrating that does get frustrating because Louis obviously to a large extent does struggle to perspective take with me and I struggle to perspective take with him because we do obviously have very different experiences of the world but it is difficult when I have to obviously acknowledge that your brain works in a certain way you can't necessarily do certain things but then you'll say to me well just don't do that just don't be anxious why are you being anxious you know that kind of thing you knob usually I get knob. yeah um 
so he really struggles to get that I can't just stop that because that is how my brain works. It needs Louis, to Yeah, and Louis's brain works so quick that it would never settle enough to actually figure out what he was feeling. Mm. Is that how what happens? Who knows? So the default is, is that just what we were talking about? <laughs> The thing we were talking well, we about. We all got distracted by Jasper playing with his reflection in the window. Yeah. So, like, we were talking about anyway. Like, yeah, I lost a thing, but yeah. So, like, I can. I'm. I'm like really good at my work. I'm like great at that. I'm really good at the blogging stuff. You know, I'm about to start uni. I'm really good at that. But I have a carer four days a week to help me manage all the things for the children. The house, the washing, the cooking, the cleaning, making sure the bills are done, bills are paid, making sure all the laundry is done. Um, I need a PA. That yeah. sounds amazing. Yeah, and it's my, it's actually my stepbrother. He he's literally with us for four days a week, on or off. Do you know what I mean? And he, I pay him to be here because, and then my children have got additional needs as well. So we've got EHTPs going through, appeals going through, assessments. We've got reviews. We've got appointments. We've got OT, salt. Um, if I had to actually do of that all on my own, I would be rocking in a corner. I couldn't do it. I couldn't. I, I literally could not. Um, but if you put me down and say, right, write a 5,000 word essay on this topic that's really interesting to me, or go and do this meeting with this big wig from this LA and put them in the place, not a problem. And and that is that is the issue, isn't it? It's it does have to be of interest, mm. um, and and there's no nagging in the world that can make him interested in doing all the washing up. No, and I know this. Us. I still it nag just, though. Yeah, it just upsets us because we can't physically do the thing. So mm. it's it's about as useful as shouting at somebody who's got no legs to climb upstairs. Do you know what I mean? There is, there is one thing that does make it easier though. Um, the one thing that does make it easier is when you do things in collaboration. Solar powered like night vision goggles. Yeah, so you wash and I dry or gamify things and stuff like that because we do no like works. that section. The issue that we're having now, to be fair, the issue we're having at the moment is Louis has no work at yeah. all. Um, and I, I, um, I have been I do much more disabled. We've had this conversation recently, haven't we? That I've been much more disabled in the last two years than I think I've ever been. Yeah. Um, so I'm really struggling to do any physical mm. like chores and stuff. I, it's really hard for me. So there's a lot. It's a, it's a lot of um, mm. there's always a lot of compromise and there has to be. And it's a lot of discussion about the things that we can and can't do. And that's also important to talk about. We're not going to talk about being all singing, all dancing and shiny um, neurodivergent people because that's not realistic. And it's no not one fair. can do all the things. It's bollocks. Yeah, no, but yeah, and, and and it's just like it's that acceptance of it's okay to be disabled, and that strength based working. Like I can save the world in some respects, but the others I can't. Like the other day, my son had forest school, so he went to school in his welly bobs, and I put his trainers in his bag to change into because he loves his dinosaur welly bob. So I was like, the school can do. What is a welly bob? A welly boot. Oh, sorry, wellies. <laughs> okay, it's more than welly bobs. Look, well, so but anyway, um, and then, um, yeah, but he is, uh, I do, Amanda, I'll speak to you about that in a bit. Anyway, thought trees. Sorry, I'm looking at comments. But um, he walked back in from school and he had two odd shoes on because I'd, I'd like packed two different trainers for him to change into. Or I just like, I'm constantly getting phone calls. Like you forgot to bring the lunch and like it's a it's an everyday struggle and it's just it, especially when you've got kids because it's like I've got I had a letter the other day saying that they've discharged my eldest from pediatrics or something and that's where he needs to get his medication from because apparently they sent me one letter before I'm like, like I can't, one letter yeah yeah I'm like so now I've got to go through that again so it's a constant um yeah it's, it's constant difficulty to not especially if you were a parent gaslight yourself for being a shitty parent because you do do need a cleaner you do need somebody to make sure that everything's just okay or even if like I'm I'm trying to work when I'm in the house it's like because of my monotropic brain I can't get on the laptop while the kids are in the house because I can't split my focus like that so yeah it, it's really difficult um but you you've just got to keep telling yourself to stop gaslighting yourself and get fucking cleaner <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, we, we, it would be nice to have a cleaner. I don't think we can do that at the moment, but... Not just yet. And I think, the, I mean, some of the difficulty is, I think, with Louis, is that everything becomes background noise. So to him, there isn't mess, there isn't a need to tidy because it's it's just background noise. It's not, you don't see it in with the exist. eyes that I see it. Like, I get very frustrated. Yeah. Um, I just want to touch on, and then I think we can start to wrap up because my Chinese yeah. might be coming, um, which is a bit more of a, again, sensitive and serious topic, which is um, attention differences and addiction, uh, which yeah. has been talked about before. Um, I mean, relatively, I find it interesting because you're, you've never been that interested in... Coffee. Yes, so coffee. Tobacco. Yeah. Cycling. Gaming. Yeah. So yeah, it's, we've got to reframe what addiction is. Um, yeah. You know, we, we're constantly we constantly in need of those happy hormones, aren't we? Um, and I see it a lot in the children that I work with as well. Like a lot of sometimes a lot of a lot of people use like cannabis to self medicate attention differences as well to just slow it's down the brain. Well. Um, so, yeah, tobacco. Um, when I was younger, like went through all of the party stimulant, illegal, druggy stuff. You know, thankfully, I'm not really addictive in that way. But sugar, sugar, you know, ADHD is crave sugar. So, yeah, it's a massive. And it's really ridiculous as well, because like especially, I mean, Mel will tell you because she's worked in like, the justice system and things like the amount of drug addicts that are clearly neurodivergent. But because if you like have a drug problem or an alcohol problem, they will then not give you the medication that you need instead. So it, it's absolutely bonkers, but there's definitely a link there between ADHD and addiction massively. And so did you write about this with... Yeah, so we, we're just doing a series, actually. So, we do, we're, so we're just doing the second one in the series. But what we're doing at the minute is we're just kind of framing what, what kind of leads to the poor outcomes that leads to like... Missed, so because you can't really just say, oh, yeah... Um, neurodivergence and addiction you've got to kind of say why so we started with all, like what constitutes autistic trauma and what constitutes adverse childhood experiences for autistic people we've just gone through the inaccessibility of diagnostic criteria and the sexism and racism around that we'll move into like the service problems that we, we come up against and then we'll probably move into He's checked it out. But then we'll probably move into like children's services, adult services, poor mental health, psychosis, addiction, because it literally is a cascading domino effect as well. And it's something I don't know why more people aren't speaking about um, like neurodivergence and addiction specifically. Because yeah. And obviously we've had David Graham and talk about it before, because like you say, next to no one talks about this. There's nothing in the research. I mean, we were looking and we can see that, um, you know, childhood trauma is linked to poor outcomes in adults. And we can see that, you know, autistic and neurodivergent people are traumatized, but nobody's doing the thing, you know? Yeah. And it's just so, mess. because obviously, like you said, it's, it's a really big just topic so actually we can't go into loads of detail but yeah. both of you you know what would you say then briefly I guess about a link between attention differences and addiction so I would say I've I've never I've never done illegal drugs um I think I've had two puffs on a cigarette um I can take it or leave it when it comes to alcohol um although I did have a period of binge drinking um when I was younger but that was more of a yeah like that social need etc cetera, etc cetera. yeah but it's also how you define addiction because like Louis said like his his thing is exercise now that will be producing some kind of stimulant for him some mm -hmm. kind of happy hormone I know that I'm, good definition yeah, uh, you know, our friend, uh, we've got a mutual friend who's the same with that. I, me, I'm really achy and in quite a lot of pain all the time. So I can't do that because it makes things worse. Um, you know, things like your phone and stuff like that. You know, we see that that gives you that instant gratification hit. I mean, TikTok's great for that. I get lost for two hours. I'm done. Um, you know, you've got sugar. I mean, I tried giving up sugar cold turkey once and oh, my good God. It was awful. But then you've got like things that just slow your brain down because it's really exhausting having constant attention differences. You never sit still. 
And especially, I think, when you get into the realms of like children and different things that force your kind of monotropic thought in separate ways, that just becomes so exhausting. But yeah, stimulants specifically, um, you know, I mean, if you think about it, that, you know, they used to, wasn't it Jackie O that was addicted to amphetamine? Um, um, yeah, so back, yeah. Um, you know, I mean, was, stuff like that used to be a lot more prevalent, like methamphetamine in, in yeah. World War II was just unbelievable. Yeah. And you can um, buy the stimulant medication over the counter, can't you? Is it like Xanax? What is it? Xanax or Ambien or something? I don't know. In, in um, America, don't they downers sedatives? No, when well, you can buy something that's a stimulant, I can't remember, but anyway, but it's just that. You know, there's so there is definitely the addiction element there, especially, um, you know, you see it a lot with I mean, we've got massive cocaine problem in this country. Well, massive cocaine problem, you know, it's just it's just all there because the the ADHD brain craves that stimulation constantly. You need it all the time. Well, yeah, exactly. I don't I don't think it would particularly work on me. Um cocaine specifically cannabis isn't authentic it's a bit of a sore point in the uk because the um the, still the Tory illegal. mp who is in charge of the drug stores her is husband cat? is one of the owners of the largest cannabis exporter in the world and it's not legal for anyone else to grow at home yeah yeah but um yeah it's just like there's so much self-medication happening yeah so like you say you've been well smoked majority of your life actually and this might yeah. be one of the longest times again i've quit oh you... this is yeah, yeah but it's really hard for him and he no has, it's not now has to, no to stop it is really hard. oh to quit yeah, yeah but not now i have quit I'm yeah done. It's, it's really difficult but he's also one, yeah but you're one of those people that if you he has one that's one cigarette that's it um the story about you and sugar and the oh yeah, I used to have I used to have um, I used to drink coffee with six sugars in, like two spoons of coffee and six sugars. Uh, yeah. And to quit, I I had to uh, get a bag of white sugar and a bag of brown sugar because brown sugar is not quite as sweet. So I went from six white to six brown for about a week, and then to five and a half white for about a week, and then five and a half brown for about a week, and then five white, and then five brown, and so on. And I got down, and I found I couldn't get below one for a long time. Uh, and then I couldn't get below half a sugar for a long time. And then I went to drinking lattes and because it was all milk, it was that little bit sweeter. And then I managed to stop having sugar. I still had to have sugar in But tea. that all came from going to the dentist who didn't understand oh, yeah. why your teeth were so yeah. clean. He, he, said, uh, he said, I can see that you brush your teeth. He said, this is really confusing. I can see you brush your teeth because of the descaling. Um, but you need nine fillings. So do you like live on chocolate? And I was like, no, no, I, I do binge a bit, but I go long periods, I don't touch it. And then I'll have like 10 in one go. Uh, he said, okay. And he's going through his list, like these hard sweets, is this, is that, drink lots of Coke and no, don't do fizzy drinks. Um, and, and I said, um, would sugar in tea or coffee be maybe what you're thinking of? He's like, yeah, yeah. Do you, do you have a lot of, Tea and coffee, I was like, yeah, I drink sort of 15, 20 cups of tea. Oh, okay. How many sugars? Six. <laughs> so that's six. There's your problem, right there. Nine fillings in, in up one to go. 20 cups of tea or coffee yeah. a day. And, and so it doesn't matter is, that I brush my teeth so much. It was just. And, the, and how many times do we, we hear parents, well, I do anyway, because of what I do, that are constantly saying that they're having to put locks on cupboard doors because their children are constantly going for the snacks and the sweets and the crisps and the. It's my. The, my Mum uh, put mum and dad way back when put um, like a little thing with a padlock on the kitchen door, so me and my brothers couldn't get in because we were just constantly eating. Uh, yeah, and then we, we found you could climb in the window if they left it open. They used to leave the little top window open. You could reach in, open the big window, get in the big window. And it's not the really starving either. It's the constant. I mean, well, I'm the little one. I'm six foot three and I'm the little one. So so there was probably an element of we needed a lot of food. Um, yeah. But yeah, literally padlocked to the kitchen for a couple of years. Yeah. And it's not unusual for um, parents of neurodivergent children to do that either. Um, because it is literally crisp, sweets, constant chocolate, things like that, because they're craving stimulation. And also instant, it's it's there, you pick it up, you eat it, as opposed to like 
yeah sandwiches i like sandwiches but you have to make a sandwich i'm a constant fridge picker so i always buy those like salad things that you can uh, just chick chicken and mushroom slices just oh. or he'll yeah. go out and come back with like a packet a whole packet of like the jammy dodgers and things and they're just gone packet of biscuits just gone one one cup a whole packet done yeah so i'm like that as well so if i'm going through a chocolate do you go through phases with things as well if i'm going through a chocolate phase like you know the big multi share bar big no there ain't no sharing <laughs> no there isn't and share bags and maltesers are, are has been when was that ever a share bag? that's never been a share bag that's like, oh family bag. size no it fucking isn't that's me in about five minutes done yeah done <laughs> yeah and yeah. sometimes i will say i will go up and i'll see in his bin just loads of wrappers for different things i'm like when did you buy this and he's just like eaten it gone to the shops and brought it yeah. back um not, pot not noodle salad thing. cream it's only one particular pot noodle that you can have salad cream with which what? is the chicken and mushroom what oh i only eat chicken and mushroom. who said that Ugh. no Sai obviously cream. doesn't like salad cream. okay so thank you so yeah. much <laughs> for this really rambling um, discussion about attention differences. If you um, manage to follow us all the way through, well done, you deserve a medal. They've got inertia. I do, stuff. I definitely do phases. I'd like, I didn't eat pizza until I was about 25. Oh, I'd and then I got obsessed with pizza for no, 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 about no, no, 10 no. years. Too boring, and now I've gone off it again. It's a big thing of same. Like it's literally like a big bowl of same that like I, think I can't. Like the carbs though. It's the carbs. Oh, you. see, that's carbs. I love carbs too, but I can't keep my attention on a plate of same for like curry and stuff like that. It's a big I plate of same. Know. That's so boring. So, oh, our final sorry. question for our guests is always: What is your favourite stim at this point in time? Favourite. I <laughs> am not in control of the banners, by the way, people. <laughs> at the minute it's doing this with this fit so this pen right if you where did i get it from so i think if you just google like penfish grip it's about a fiver but they're great oh um favorite stim um singing i'm doing a lot of, uh i don't i don't know i don't even notice that bloody stim i rub my fingers together a lot all sorts do we What's have a not stim can you have well, a favorite no, one? No, but it's. I just like to hear what people's potential favorite ones are. Yeah. Um, Any ideas it's about your favorite? To say. Drumming, maybe. I do that a lot. Is that one of your favorites? You're quite. Well, it's, it's quite pleasurable. He's a mover, so yeah, his stims are definitely very. Thank you. His stims are definitely very um, tactile. Um, potentially quite noisy it's as well. A lot, of his, a lot of his, a lot of his stems. Dessert now. Do you know now we've been talking about sweet stuff? Mm. I really want like dessert or Maltesers. I wonder if like the dessert shop's got some Malteser cheesecake. That'd be nice. No, Maltesers original Maltesers. Every other Maltesers product is just fucking wrong. Uh, no, 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 it's no, like no. coffee flavored but, chocolate. No, but chocolate should taste like chocolate. Coffee should taste like coffee. Have... Have you ever done that thing where you make them last longer by nibbling all the chocolate off the outside of the Maltese? Around then... the outside, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't yeah. nibble it. I'm a bit big. They're a bit little and delicate, you know. Yeah, I know, but, but it makes bite, them, last bite them in half and suck out the middle. Ooh, I've not tried that one. Yeah, do that one. That's quite fun. Yeah. So yes, he he's a very tactile movie stimmer. When we, um, I mean, we haven't been to the cinema in quite a long time now. Strawberries and cream. No, I, I like strawberry flavour things. I don't like actual strawberries. I'm the opposite. I can do them in smoothies. I can do almost any fruit in smoothies, but most fruit as fruit. I can't do it except for bananas and apples. So I'm the opposite. I absolutely hate strawberry flavoured things. It's just so wrong for actual strawberries I will eat. Cadbury eyeballs and ice. Got Caitlin's attention with Malteser mention. Well, I suppose they're small enough that seagulls could bring, not seagulls, pigeons could bring them, couldn't they? All digestive chocolate biscuits, because you've literally got a cup of tea. Chocolate uh, caramel. Oh, yeah. Better. The oh, chocolate caramel. Oh, and you dump them for like four and a half seconds in a and cup of coffee. And they just break. Mm. You know, you know, they don't, you yeah, said they don't about, fall apart in the drink. I might have to herd you, like. Herd kittens. Herd the kittens. Sorry. Yeah, to try. <laughs> no, it's fine. It just is amusing. Milk chocolate hobnobs are particularly delicious, but they no, do run the risk hobnobs of falling are apart. Bitty. Ew, ew. Yeah, the milk chocolate ones, you got to dunk them in coffee. <laughs> no, they're bitty. That, that's just wrong. Not like when you that. dunk them, it's all soft and just melts. No, you mm. still get bits that stick out. And, mm, no, no texture. You wrong. 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 A Cadbury Spira. What's a Cadbury Spira? I don't know, but I've. 
And oh, I it's think, like a biscuit straw. I think Caitlin has um, hijacked Victoria's um, messages because seals, seals are, are cool. cool. Yeah, feels like that's weird seal. Um, pigeons or seals? Okay. Pigeons or seals? No, it's both. They work away. together. Pigeons and seals work together. Um, I was just going to say, great. yeah, when we used to go to the cinema, he would stim by like drawing patterns on my legs and stuff quite a lot, and then I, I could tell I, if I he was. Go, I only go to the cinema for the snacks. <laughs> yeah, but those, those big family bags and Maltesers, but I'd finish them before the trailers even finished. So then yeah. the film starts, yeah. and you know, there's nothing to eat. Yeah. There's nothing left. Yeah. Fall asleep. That's what I do. If I sit still for too long, I fall asleep. I just go. But I, film. Yeah, no, it, it, I'm gone. But yeah, I only go for the snacks. Oh, and the really bad hot dogs that's probably never seen a hot uh, like a pig in its life. Or like the nachos. <laughs> oh, no, that's all that's all hooves and anuses, isn't it? I anyway, right, okay. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> we're definitely gonna go on this weird tangent. Okay, thank you everybody for being here. Um, our next sessions are we're gonna be doing a little string of sessions on sensory and stimming um and things like that. So next week we're actually going to be talking about uh specifically <laughs> now I need to double check what I'm actually doing next week. What am I doing next week? Anyone know? Um money. I think we're covering autistic in other cultures and a number of other things with Monique Crane. And then the following week and the week after, we're doing lots of stuff on sensory and stimming because we haven't really covered it properly um, since we started uh, Orchasmy, specifically because I've been waiting for Annette because that's Annette's background. Um, so next week we've got Monique Crane and then the following week we've got Annette and Monique and we're going to cover Annette, kind Annette. of the basics of sensory and stimming and relaxation and the following week after that, we're actually going to talk about sensory trauma, which is really... Um, oh, really that Emma Reardon paper. Yes. I love yeah. that paper. I've been referencing it in all my reports as soon as I got my sticky little paws on it. It's great. Yes. So we've got Emma Reardon coming on in three weeks' time. So basically we're covering... We're Sorry. kind of doing the basics of sensory and stimming. We're doing a bit on relaxation. Then we're going to do, like, getting more and more in-depth about sensory and stimming. Okay, the yeah. real question... That's got to be Sai. That has to be Sai who's written that. Yes. Mayonnaise oh, or salad cream. Cream. Point out, We're leaving out ketchup. I'm now team ketchup. No, you're you one or the other. You're team salad cream by default, Louis. You have to be. Oh, good, good, no, no, he no. hates salad oh. cream. Oh, Not yes. if you paid me, it's vile. No, he's got um, <clears throat> he's very, very um, sensory sensitive when it comes to food, mm. and obviously, salad cream's quite vinegary to some extent, so he hates vinegar. Um, justice Just for the hummus, smell of it. justice, justice for hummus, justice for hummus. Oh my god, she <laughs> puts vinegar, she vinegar on her veg, yeah, miracle whip. See, Bobby, anyway. what's American salad cream? I don't salad know what miracle whip is. It's American salad cream. It's like salad cream, but sweeter. So thank you, everybody. I'm going to play the outro for you all now, and we will see you in the week. Um, uh, Tanya, you're welcome to stay on for a sec if you want. Once okay. the... We're going to have our own party, but we won't.